Over the next few months, the Treasury Department will be distributing funds from the nearly $2 trillion American Rescue Plan to local and state governments. While the money will go toward rebuilding some industries that were hurt by the coronavirus pandemic, it will also help create new government jobs and opportunities over the next few years for people who were furloughed or laid off. At this rate, Goldman Sachs estimates at least two-thirds of state and local jobs lost in the past year will return by September. For more on this, let's bring in CBS News reporter Sarah Ewal Weiss. Hi there, Sarah. So this is some good news. When do experts think we'll see state and local jobs begin to return to pre-pandemic levels? Yes. So I think it's important to start off by saying the economy is still down 1.2 million public sector jobs. That's only slightly down from the 1.5 million at the height of the pandemic. So there is a long way to go in terms of recovery at this stage in time. You mentioned Goldman Sachs. They expect to have two-thirds of those state and local jobs back by September. And they say that's in part because of this state and local aid, as well as the education funding provided in the American Rescue Plan. The Treasury Secretary specifically says she expects full employment overall to return next year. So that actually brings up that deadline as well with the passage of the recovery, or excuse me, rescue plan. But something to keep in mind is the Treasury Department was given 60 days to create the guidance for this funding. So that funding has not actually gone out yet. It will go out in coming months. And it won't all go out at once. Some of it will go out immediately. Some of it will go out a little bit later on. But this is something that state and local officials are already looking at in terms of what they're expecting and coming up with plans on how specifically to spend this money. Well, as you write, the chief economist from the National Association of Counties says the American Rescue Plan could help create new jobs in addition to bringing back employees who were furloughed or laid off. How? Right. So when this pa package first passed, we had a number of state and local officials saying that this money was going to save jobs. Specifically in Hawaii, they were warning of layoffs, and then he said they don't expect those for the foreseeable future. The police department in Las Vegas, the sheriff said that he was facing a budget gap and was expecting to have to lay off workers, and then he said he wouldn't have to because of this funding. But it also is an opportunity to create new opportunities, as you mentioned. Some governments are looking at projects that they would like to have done and are now able to fund uh, one example is Kentucky. The governor uh, announced with state leaders, both Republicans and Democrats, that they've come up with a plan to spend the funds that they're expecting to receive. And they're going to be focusing on projects that focus on infrastructure. They're also looking at building schools, providing clean water, and expanding broadband. And they, together, they expect those opportunities to create about 14,000 or more jobs in the state of Kentucky. Another unique example that I saw when looking at this is a county in North Carolina. They are looking at using the funds to provide public health workers in every public school and provide mental health workers for seniors specifically. Um, and that is something that I think a lot of different officials have said they're concerned about the impact the pandemic has had on folks' mental health. So this is a way to create new jobs, public sector jobs, with the funds that are going to be provided that address some of the concerns that they're facing moving forward. The other flip side of this is some states and local governments are looking at using these funds specifically to provide training opportunities, which will create other jobs potentially. In Nevada, they're looking at retraining workers after the economy there, the tourism economy was decimated. So they're using some of the funds in their framework, they hope, to retrain workers after they acknowledge that maybe some of the jobs that were around before the pandemic might not come back. Well, Sarah, what kind of impact could the funding from the American Rescue Plan have on women and people of color? Right. So what we know about this is that women and people of color have been disproportionately impacted by the coronavirus pandemic, especially in the employment sector. 
And what is also known is that women and people of color are overrepresented in public sector jobs. The Economic Policy Institute says that 60% of public workforce workers are women. About 8.7% of black women are government and state workers. And so those are just some of the numbers that we've seen. And because these jobs have been impacted disproportionately, so have women and people of color. This may provide new opportunities to bring them back into the workforce. As we've seen overall, the unemployment rate is going down, but it still remains higher among people of color. And women have been slower to reenter the workforce. All right, Sarah Ewell Weiss for us. Sarah, thank you.